we got a crack here the, near the battery cover that I'm going to be gluing with hot glue, high temperature hot glue. Uh, this looks like pieces of deteriorated rubber, which uh, make me think that this might have had a deter might have a deteriorated drive belt. Here's the inside of the machine. You can see it's manufactured by Toshiba. The whole back comes off. The battery compartment connects here, which I find very nice. To get the transport mechanism off, I took this screw, that screw, this screw, the screw there, and then the screw down here off. And I also took the screws that hold the handle on, because it's well made. The handle, which is itself metal, is held onto the chassis, screwed through the plastic case directly to the chassis. So the load on the handle is actually with the chassis, and it doesn't put a load on the plastic. I've uh, hot and glued this crack, it's holding nicely. And also, I'm going to have to hot and glue these things because they would have gone here. So the speaker part comes off separately. And since again, see it's a Toshiba speaker, 1.5 watts, 8 ohms. Pretty narrow profile on the frame too, which is quite interesting with a nice Alnico magnet. Also keep in mind, uh, when I took the transport mechanism out, I also had to take off the head cover and this little thing that held the head cover on. One can see the transport mechanism now. Uh, here's the problem. Um, obviously, the belt indeed has deteriorated. The belt will go from the uh, motor shaft to the flywheel around the large diameter of the flywheel. But another problem is, is there's a small rubber ring around the upper part of the motor that does rewinding. And the small metal ring is kind of intact. But if you see carefully, why is this thing defaulting to, man to manual focus or whatever? Um, it it's kind of cracking. It's beginning to deteriorate itself. That's not going to last. That's that's not a good thing. But anyway, you can see it's very well made, very solidly constructed. The brakes work like this. So put it into playback. Pushes the brakes out of the way. Stop. Rewind. Stop, pass forward, record of course, play. I'm going to adjust the brake pressure just by bending this metal on both sides to make the brakes a little stronger. Out of my spare belts in here, I found a belt that fits this thing perfectly. And I mean literally it's the exact fit. Just right on the transport now and it playing forward function works just for good clutch mechanism beautifully flywheel and everything for rewind I'm just gonna for the time being leave it as it is and then if it ever gets to the point to work it doesn't work at all then I'll put an o-ring on there fast forward fast forward's working good this original belt here for the Supply, the take-up reel is still very good, so and the counter belt is also still good too. Okay, so transport mechanism is now working. It's able to play. It's just not very loud. Climbs all the way up. So you know that obviously means it's going to need some new electrolytic capacitors because if you find an old tape recorder and the amplifier is working but is still pretty quiet when the volume all the way up, uh, 99 times out of 100 it means bad capacitors, bad electrolytic capacitors, at least one that's bad. Sometimes it's just one, sometimes it's multiple, but now it's you know, rewind. The brakes are working well. Fast forward. I have it at 1 and 7.8. This was recorded at 3 3 so it's slow. But but anyway, I'm just showing that it's working. I'll be showing this thing fully later once I can recap it and so forth.
Okay, I made a little record test. Couldn't help myself. This is a record test on the Allied TR-1055. This is at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. This is before any recapping is being done. Let's see how this comes out. And if I go to record mode without pressing play, it still turns the amplifier on, which is phen phenomenal. I love it when recorders do that, because that allows you to set the level. It's in manual level control, the level's all the way up, and I still have to speak at a decent volume right into the microphone to get de good deflection on the meter, because the capacitors are bad. Automatic level control doesn't even work, so at least automatic level control doesn't show the meter. I'm attempting an automatic level control recording. Now we're back in manual level control, Ooh, 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. Emptying an automatic level control recording. Oh. Now we're back in manual level control, Ooh, 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. So I guess automatic just doesn't move the meter when it records, but it still records. So, but still, none, nonetheless though, um, just judging by the quiet audio on playback, although it might sound loud in the video, and judging by the, um, the um, having to turn the level all the way up and he's still having to speak a uh, decent volume directly into the microphone to get decent deflection on the meter, it's uh, extremely obvious that the amplifier definitely has leaky capacitors inside. And of course, there's two ways you could, you mean, well, three ways you could go about it. You could do, you could just dive in, replace all the electrolytics in there without testing them, or you could get a known good capacitor while the amplifier is running and put it across the electrolytics in the circuit until you come across the bad one, then you'll put it across and usually you'll hear the audio come in much stronger. Or you can go with an ESR meter. This is a homemade ESR meter, but you can also buy actual ESR meters and um, to test the equivalent series resistance of a capacitor because if it's too high then it's leaky so that's a quick and easy way to test for bad caps if you have an ESR meter but anyway this recorder rewind is so far rewind is well that old rubber is still works well so I'm going to keep that on there for the time being and um, it's a cool recorder I haven't tried 3 and 3 fourths yet Sound quality at 1 and 7 eighths is alright. I've heard some that sound better, but this one isn't all that bad for 1 and 7 eighths. So, um, it doesn't change the equalization, of course. It's just a capstan sleeve type machine. So there's no equalization change for the slower speed, which is unfortunate. But it's still a very nice recorder. And it's going to be even nicer once we get new capacitors in it and get it all back together. But definitely, uh, looking at the transport mechanism, it's very uh, solidly constructed hardly a lick of plastic in this mechanism. It's lots and lots of metal pieces, uh, very solid construction. The button mechanism there is just solid, very, very well made tape recorder from the late 1960s. Okay, so now the speaker part is I glued these pieces back and I mounted the speaker thing as it's supposed to be before you put the machine back together. The transport mechanism is put back into the recorder screwed back on of course I just realized I was starting to put the thing together like a stupid idiot just now remembered I need to freaking service the amplifier now with the capacitors before I actually put it back together gee whiz so to take the board off you take this screw off and you take that screw off and then there was a screw up down here take that screw off and then literally hinges out like that. It's, they had servicing in mind when they designed it because the board actually is on little little hinges on here which I, I always love it whenever they design machines like this with the board on a hinge you actually can open it up and service the thing. This was made at a time when it wasn't about throwaway culture build it to break planned obsolescence or it's just gonna break and you throw it away and you buy a new one Instead, people would actually service equipment. So they made this thing where you could actually open it up, even service friendly, hinge the board out like that, get good access to the component side of the board. Another interesting component I want to note is this right here. I believe this is a, it looks similar to old Soviet, some old Soviet transistors, but I believe this is a 
diode or rectifier, two diodes back to back, I believe. Okay, I replaced the suspect capacitors. Um, some of them were still all right, you know, like this one, that one. But the grand majority of them were leaky. So, um, um, anyway, some of them were so leaky the meter didn't even register, and others were a little bit leaky, but still probably would have worked, but um, were not as good as they should have been. But there were a good two capacitors in here that were so dang leaky the meter wouldn't even register. So I'm expecting now the amplifier is probably going to be really nice and a lot louder. Quite loud considering it's uh, the speaker at least is rated at 1.5 watts. So I imagine the amplifier is around the neighborhood of 1.5 or so watts. Let a woman from the 1960s speak. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. This is a recording. Prologue. In the pre dawn hours on that cold January morning, the largest comet to approach the Earth in over a hundred years streaked its way across the sky. Its course made it most visible to observers on the North American continent. But its distance was too great to provide much excitement for the astronomers or the small number of early risers. Expecting to see a flashing light in the sky. It was near enough, however, to emit rays that interfered with late, late movies on television and the midnight to dawn radio stations. But other than that, it wasn't too much of an event. There were a few small items on the back pages of the newspapers concerning the passing of the comet. But no one was overly concerned or even interested. It was twilight. The setting sun was crowned by streamers of pink and gold reaching up to the far sky. On the far horizon, the fluffy pink clouds reflected the glory of a typical Texas sunset. The streets glistened in the aftermath of the rains that had deluged the area during the day. This is a recording made on the Owlite TR-1055 reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. This is using, of course, a Shure SM57 professional microphone through a Symmetrix 528E voice processor before it goes to the tape recorder.
Boom. Yeah, I did one of those moon burps into the professional mic. Oh, boom. I also have a homemade pop filter on this microphone. Today's date is November 16th, 2019, A.D. on the Gregorian calendar. I hope you enjoy this tape recording. To change the speed, you must take the capstan sleeve. Stick it onto the capstan and screw the little thingy on top. Then we'll prepare to make a recording. This here. Set that to zero VU on that little meter on the Panasonic audio mixer model WR450. Then we will set it on here. Chip at zero VU on this recorder's meter. Turn that down. And then we can make a professional microphone recording. Press and record and play at the same time. With that professional mic, I can get good deflection on the meter in a good controlled manner. Well, hello there, listeners. This is your host again. Uh, the same setup as you just saw, except this time we're running the recorder at three and three fourths inches per second, uh, which is the optimal speed for better quality recordings using the Allied TR-1055 reel-to-reel tape recorder, which is, of course, manufactured by Toshiba in Japan. So this is, in reality, a Toshiba tape recorder, and there probably exists out there the original Toshiba-branded model, which probably looks identical or almost identical to this recorder, I would imagine. Anyway, this is a well-built machine, metal mechanics, AC bias. For sure. I don't know for sure if it's AC or DC erase, but it's definitely AC bias. I could see the bias oscillator circuitry on the board, a transistor and that high frequency transformer uh, signifying the AC bias oscillator. And also the sound quality and the low amount of background noise also makes it plain that it is AC bias. Okay, now we're going to make a recording using a regular uh, microphone, the Sony uh, F96. Uh, microphone, this one right here, plugged into the recorder, and we're going to do a manual and an automatic level control to see how it goes. Okay, so this is a recording with the Sony, um, whatchamacallit, microphone, F96 microphone, uh, manual level control recording. Speaking up close to the mic, just about like an inch or two away from the mic. And now we're going to do arm's length with level all the way up. Level is all the way up, and I'm doing arm's length distance to record. And uh, then we're back up close to the microphone again with the level down slightly. And then now we're going to do automatic level control. ALC is now enabled. This is now an automatic level control recording. Everybody gotta love ALC. Good old ALC. If I put on the speaker monitor, it's actually, you can hear how the ALC operates. If I make it feedback, you'll hear it kind of going in and out. It's doing that because of the ALC. If I go to manual, it's your typical feedback sound. In automatic mode, the meter is disabled, so the only way to actually see the recording level of this recorder is using uh, manual level control. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this recording on the Toshiba recorder. It's a six transistor unit. The amplifier uses five transistors, and then the bias oscillator uses one transistor. They are germanium transistors, and the majority of them, if not all of them, are PNP.
Cassette Master Production.